Hey, this is Pastor Lafayette. Thank you for joining me today. Let's get started in Psalm chapter 32. We've been there the last couple of days. I'm going to read the psalm again, uh, verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I'll confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And for this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you will be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they will not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. <clears throat> Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. We're going to, we're in verse um, 7. There was a song, and I'm not trying to be a uh, American Idol by any stretch of the imagination. But every time I read this verse, I'm reminded of it, and it, it, there's a, a couple of, there's a word or so that's changed because of the King James, but I, I, I remember hearing a song years ago, and it goes, uh, You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. I think about that song a lot. And I realize, and, and, and I hope that you realize this morning, that, that, that the Lord is your hiding place. That He wants to preserve you from trouble. Surround you with songs of deliverance. And, you know, you can look at that, that one part multiple ways. I, th I, I think of it as, uh, you'll compass me about, it says in the King James, to surround me with songs of deliverance that, that man, my whole life will be uh, one big song. Everywhere I turn, he will have delivered me. And I, I believe that's his goal. That's his heart for me. That's his heart for you. Verse 8 is powerful. I will instruct you. It changes the, the, the tone. The, uh, the person changes. It's God speaking. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And how many of you say, thank you, Lord? I will guide you with my eye. Now, uh, this is very important for you and me. Because he's saying, with my foresight, with my vision, with my ability to see into the future, to pick things out and see things that are happening, see how things are coming together, I will guide you with my eye. That's his purpose. That's his goal for you, is to instruct you, teach you the way you should go, and then to guide you with his vision, with his foresight. Aren't you excited about that? Then he says, don't be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, or they won't come near you. When I think about that, that verse, and I want you to think about this as well, um, you and I should not want to be just people who are told, go, do this, do that, do this. He, the Lord doesn't want us to be necessarily led by bit and bridle. He doesn't want puppet Christians. He wants Christians who know Father's heart who have a relationship with him, who know his plans, his ways, who hear his instruction 
And don't turn like a horse who's got a bridle in his mouth, but yet who hear the instructions of the Lord, who are guided with his insight, his foresight, and make our decisions based on his spirit in us. His goal and his desire is not to lead us around with a bridle and a bit, to try and lead us to him and always try and drag us along to get us to drink from his water. His goal is to instruct us and teach us so that we make choices. His intention is never to remove your free will, but to, in our free will, desire and crave to make decisions based on His will and follow Him with our complete heart. If you trust in the Lord, mercy will surround you. So be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Bless you today. Thank you for joining me. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Bye-bye.